medication and lots of people pretty angry about that. But at 7.41, I want to talk to you about your fitness. Are you getting ready later this morning to head out, do a bit of exercise and get in your 10,000 steps? It's quite difficult at the moment because you've got the gyms shut. And if you like the gym, obviously that's that's difficult, isn't it? Because you can't go there and you're thinking about, well, where shall I go for an exercise, bit of exercise and can I get in? those 10,000 steps. We can't do any team sport, anything like that either. So are you one of these people who've got a fancy watch or an app on your phone that tells you how many steps you're doing? And are you a bit of a slave to it? You have to get your 10,000 steps in per day. I am trying to and failing miserably. Well, Lisa Maria Kerwin is a life and fitness coach. Dale Ford is a cabbie supermarket delivery driver who drives around with a skipping rope in her taxi. And both join me now. Good morning to you. Morning. Morning. All right, Lisa, let's start with you then. So how easy is it to get the 10,000 steps in a day? Am I just being a bit rubbish? (laughs) I suppose it depends on your lifestyle you know if you're someone that sits at a desk or you know in a studio all day then yes you probably have to pre-plan when you're going to get your steps in um I sort of try and recommend to people to you know do something that first thing in the morning if you're going to get up and maybe do a little bit of a a home workout or go for a work a a walk first thing in the morning then you're going to sort of up those steps quite quickly and then by the end of the day you're not sort of sitting there looking at your your Fitbit or your your or your smartwatch and uh, looking at sort of another 5000 steps to go and sort of giving up oh. <laughs> 10 and 10000 it sounds like a lot why why is it 10000 um the that's the, actually the recommendation for the british heart foundation um it's uh, to 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 keep us healthy um when it comes to um, exercise and sort of keeping healthy, especially when it comes to things like burning fat, and um, we've got something called um, your total daily energy expenditure. It's what you burn every day. Um, 70% of that is what you would burn at rest, so doing absolutely nothing. Um, 10% of that can be affected by doing general daily activity, and that's called your NEAT, your non-exercise activity thermogenesis. thermogenesis. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> It's very technical, isn't it? So 10% of your daily activity can affect how much you burn. Only 5% of that is actually exercise. So you could do an exercise or do a workout and then sit on your bottom the rest of the day and not really affect how much your burn rate is throughout the day. I but see. But if, if you're doing sort of general activity all day, taking the stairs instead of the lift, you know, going for a walk or, you know, parking a little bit further away from the supermarket, all those little sort of general activity activities and extra steps, that's going to sort of help your sort of total daily energy expenditure so you can burn a little bit more and effectively a little bit more as well. <laughs> oh, I like that. Now, now, can you tell me how much you've done this morning? How many steps are you at or what have you done already at 7.44 oh. on a Monday morning? Anything? <laughs> Not a lot. 493. I'm nowhere started. 493? Well, well, I'm on 220. <laughs> so that's even worse. That's terrible. But it does, I didn't have my phone with me when I did a quick lap of the building to get a coffee earlier. That would have been a few more steps. Uh, Dale, let's bring you in because you do sit down for your work. So yeah. so really, I have no excuse, do I? Because you're pretty good at trying to, to keep your steps up, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. I don't monitor it or anything like that. But um, when I was a taxi driver... Um, we used to sit down driving. Um, I, I used to be members of gyms. I used to stop and go for a swim or a sauna and do a group class. I find the gym a little bit boring. But since they've all shut up, I, you know, I'm near some lovely parks. I park on a rank um, somewhere safely, and I do walk through the park quite briskly. I've got a little dog. I take her for a walk. But um, the thing is, I always do carry the skipping rope, as I said, and my boxing gloves um, because sometimes you know i want to stand by my taxi if you find a little bit of green or a little courtyard you can literally skip anywhere i'm not much of a runner um you know like some people just sort of glide i do little sprints but i prefer brisk walking um so yeah i like skipping how good are you at skipping i try i'll I'll be honest with you i tried that during the last lockdown in the spring in my back garden and it did really hurt my knees i don't know if i'm just a bit of a wimp but it's hard isn't it I love the way our boxes do it. You know, they sort of just do it like little yes. jolts, you know, on each foot. I can't do it on each individual foot, just two feet, just like jumping up and down and do it quite fast. I really enjoy that. And I love boxing. I don't like sort of hitting people, but I've got a punch bag in my garden, so I do punch that. 
and that gets me sweating and it gets um, all the blood pumping. I really enjoy that. It gets all your frustrations out as well. You can get little mitts where like a, a family member or your partner or someone can hold up the gloves and you can do like little drills and punch them. I find that's the only thing that really makes me sort of sweat and work hard is just punching. It gets all your frustrations out. <laughs> I was going to say, it's quite good on two levels really, isn't it? Because it's yeah. fitness, but also quite good to get any tension and stress and frustration out, isn't yes, it? Yes, yes. I love punching and skipping and what else? And I also do yoga and meditation so I always carry like a, a roll up yoga mat you know when the weather's lovely I used to park up go to one of these beautiful parks in London just lay my yoga mat down lay on the ground and just stretch and move and things like that um, it's so important um, stretching is not just all hard you know exercise you've got to stretch and move your body and balance in and then meditate just close your eyes and think of a sound for 20 minutes because our brains are, we've got a lot of anxiety at the moment and everyone's really worried and my brain's constantly thinking what am I going to do next and all this worry so just turn your brain off for like 20 minutes morning and night and that really does help you know so meditation I learned TM transcendental meditation wow. about 25 you- years ago how do you find time for all this? Because you're doing your taxi driving, you're doing your supermarket deliveries, you're putting yeah. you're putting us to shame here with, with how no, much you're packing no. in. I mean, yeah, now I'm doing the deliveries. That's really physical, you know, putting boxes on people's doorsteps and loading up the van and things like that. So it's quite physical, walking up and down steps. But meditation, you could do it anywhere. So if you're getting on the train or sitting in a taxi, just close your eyes for 20 minutes. No one knows you're doing it. So you can do that anywhere. You can do it in bed, you can do it in the bath, you know, 20 minutes. Just sit on the sofa, turn everything off for a minute. It's very wise words, but that's not going to get me step count up, is it? But I take your point. I'll do a bit of that as well. And and you've got children, Lisa, and and you're trying to get through lockdown like the rest of us with with your own challenges and juggles. How do you fit it all in? Yeah, Um, well, I'm actually um, doing lots of um, home workouts for um, people. Lots of people are joining in. I'm I'm at this fit mum on Instagram and sometimes the kids join in as well. And I'm I'm trying to sort of show others that it is possible. Um, And I I think I'm quite relatable to other mums. We do. We actually do boxing. We do club land combat. You might um, like (laughs) just thinking of the other speaker that's on. (laughs) Get down on, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, Club Land Combat, come and join us. But but yeah, it's it's just about doing what we can at the moment with, with what we've got. And um yeah, we've we've built a lovely, lovely community um online and we've got lots of people sort of joining in together and I think that helps to motivate you as well. When you've got um a group of people, um then you know we're all talking about it you know when we're not exercising as well what we're going to do the next time and I've you know over the last couple of weeks done some challenges where I've managed to get some um, prizes from companies and set up some competitions for people to to join in and potentially so they're joining in for free but potentially winning a prize as well just to help motivate people to sort of join in and keep fit and keep moving Mm, that's the aim of the game, isn't it? Lovely to talk to you, uh, Dale Ford and Lisa Maria Curran. So I want to know from you, do you have one of these watches or apps on your phone where you track how many steps you do a day? And are you regularly hitting that magic 10,000? If so, what are you doing? How are you getting to that point? 0800 111 4041.